What is up guys, TEJ here and in my hands I have what might just be Mizuno Golf's best iron lineup to date and in today's video we are going to put them to the test. So let's go. Right guys, so this is Mizuno Golf's Mizuno Pro 240 lineup of irons. And as per usual from Mizuno, when they release a new MP line of irons, the big emphasis this year is on making incremental improvements to an already extremely solid lineup. For 2024 and in this 240 lineup, we have three different irons. The Mizuno Pro 245, which is going to be Mizuno's flagship player's distance hollow bodied iron design. We have the Mizuno Pro 243, which is going to be that more middle ground player's CB, a little bit more forgiving than the JPX 920. Tour, And then we have the Mizuno Pro 241, which is going to be that players focused control oriented MB iron. Now there aren't a ton of massive changes in this iron lineup in comparison to the 220, but there are a few design tweaks that I want to cover starting with the 245. So the 245 is going to be a fully hollow bodied chromoly steel design in the two through eight iron. Then it actually moves to a partially hollow carbon steel design in the nine through gap wedge to help with a little bit more control. Additionally, this year we actually have a different placement of where the tungsten is in comparison to the 225s to help give you a little bit more launch over those irons. Now the 243 is going to be more focused on being that middle ground player CB like I mentioned earlier. We have chromoly steel plus a flowed micro slot in the four through seven irons of this iron to help give you a little bit more launch and ball speed. Now as you move into the eight through gap wedge that's where they take out the flowed micro slot and move into carbon steel to help give you a little bit more control in those clubs. Now in order to keep the gapping proper with the slight ball speed gains that Mizuno saw in the long and mid irons of the 243s, they actually had to go to slightly stronger lofts in the nine through gap wedge of this iron set. So what we're going to be seeing is a 48 degree gap wedge, 44 degree pitching wedge, and 40 degree nine iron, a little bit stronger than what we saw in the 223s. As for the 241s, we really aren't going to see a ton of changes in these irons and as you'd probably expect for a muscle back, but Mizuno was able to move a little bit more mass behind the hitting area to try to give you a little bit more solid feel through impact. And additionally, we will see some small visual changes like a slightly thinner top line in this iron set. Now aside from those things that kind of cover each iron individually, something that Mizuno has done throughout this entire lineup 245 through 241 is they've added a little bit more bounce in these irons to try to give you a little bit better turf interaction. Additionally, all of these irons still remain forged in Hiroshima, Japan, and all of these irons still have that copper underlay that Mizuno has become known for over the last few years. Now in terms of what's available at retail, what you're going to be able to get, the 245s are available two through gap wedge for righties and four through gap wedge for lefties. The 243s are going to be available only for right-handed golfers, four through gap wedge, and then the 241s are going to be available three through pitching wedge for righties and four through pitching wedge for lefties. Now, in terms of our testing today and how we're going to go about it, we are set up on the range with GC Quad, and we are going to hit all three of these models in short, mid, and long irons, and really just see how they compare and stack up from a looks, feel, and overall performance standpoint. I have been patiently waiting for this review. I am super excited to test these, so let's get after it. Alrighty, guys. So we are warmed up. The way we're going to work through this testing is we're going to go 241s, 243s, 245s. Something I do want to keep in mind before we even get to hitting shots. These are not the right shafts for me. These are not the shafts that currently game. All of these shafts are different. So we do have to take the numbers a little bit with a grain of salt. But nonetheless, I still think we're going to be able to give you guys a solid idea as to where we're at with all of these irons. Starting with the 241 pitching wedge, right off the bat, these look very good. A little bit of a different shape than I'm used to. I currently play the title of 620 MBs. To me, those are a little bit sharper in the top line and the leading edge. These look a little bit more soft, a little bit more rounded. That's kind of how Mizuno tends to be with the shapes. But nonetheless, I think it's a really good shape. Very minimal offset. Love the blade length. Very, very solid from a looks perspective. I mean, signature Mizuno feel. 136 carry right there. Really solid. 131 carry. A little bit shorter carry. Spin one up there. But yeah, tight draw. I mean, they're blades, man. When you're talking blades, there isn't a ton of major changes you can actually make to make a blade better. But it's the small things. Maybe changing up the offset, changing up the bounce, changing up where the center of gravity is. The biggest thing this year, like I mentioned earlier, they moved a little bit more mass right behind the sweet spot. And then they also added a little bit of bounce. So that's kind of the main things, the main changes in these 241s. And I mean, I think those are good changes to make. We'll go for a flighted one here. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a good example to me because I kind of bottomed out early there, but it just didn't quite dig. Like I think my 620 MBs do a little bit too much. These seem better right off the bat from a bounce perspective. 124 yards of carry right there. That's the pitching wedge. Move up into the seven iron now. Looking down at this, once again, softer shape, perfect blade length. I mean, these look so good. Oh my goodness, and the feel is just so good. 170 carry, 124 ball, 7400 spin, 17 launch. Like I said, numbers we got to take with a little bit of a grain of salt just because of the shafts. I'm very curious to see how these compare in terms of like flight ability, workability to the 243s and the 245. So we'll try to cut one. Yeah. And that's exactly what you can do with a blade, man. 160 carry, tight little cut. We'll go for a bigger draw here. I kind of missed it, but yeah, it's a little bit of a bigger draw. 171 carry, 6,500 spin. We'll go for a flighted one here. Yeah, super good. 165, 7200, tight draw, man. I mean, these are just doing what blades are meant to do, baby. Down to the five iron now. This is where it gets a little intimidating, doesn't it? But I mean, just such a great shape, really. That's a high draw. I pulled that, 193 yards. Oh man, these are so fun to hit if you can center them. 193 once again, 5200. I currently am playing CBs in my long irons, but when you flush these, man, it just makes you want to play a full set of them. Even though that's probably a bad idea, let's just be real. Yeah, the added bounce is so clearly the biggest difference to me over the 221s. I mean, it's just evident. I feel like I'm taking smaller divots. I feel like I'm catching it in a better spot on the face, not quite as high. I personally, although it's a small change, I personally think these are a lot more playable than the 221s were. And these are ones that I am probably going to seriously consider for my bag. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and move up into the 243s now and see what we got. So so 243 is going to be that sort of middle ground CB, like I mentioned earlier. Immediately right off the bat, looking down at it, it's a little bit bigger. It's got a little bit more offset. Two degrees stronger the 243s are as opposed to the 241s. To me, this is a darn near perfect shape. Big enough to make it look forgiving, but it's small enough to really give you something that I don't want to say looks blade-like, but just looks very controllable. Looks like you're going to be able to flag it with these, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, that was flushed. 140, 9800. I'm gonna be honest with you, I hit some decent ones with the 240 ones, but that immediately felt better to me. Little thin there, but that's more on me than the club itself. 138 carry. We'll go ahead and try to flight one here. Yeah, really good. I didn't quite catch that great, but just the window it comes out in is really nice. The feel's good. 139 carry. All right, we'll go one more pitching wedge. We'll try to flight one with a little bit better contact. A little bit better contact. Still not great, but yeah, 132, a little bit lower launch. So I was originally thinking after I hit those 241s, like I really want to switch to those. Now after hitting these 243s, I mean, just the pitching wedge, really surprisingly good. All right, now looking out of the seven iron, once again, it's a really good shape. Yes, there's a touch more offset on this than the 241, but the blade length is superb. I mean, there's just a lot to like in terms of shaping. That's kind of stupid good, I gotta be honest. 175, 6500, a little bit more ball speed, a little bit lower spin, and that's really just coming from the fact that these are two degrees stronger. We got a chromoly face on the four through seven iron of these 243s, as opposed to carbon in the pitching wedge. So these are built to be a little bit more speed oriented in the four through seven iron. And right off the bat, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, and for a thin strike right there, I think that's the biggest thing. You know, they've got that slot behind the face, and for a thin strike, those numbers are incredible. Same ball speed as the last one that was a lot closer to being flushed. 174 carry, barely jumped in spin, maybe 200 RPMs, super, super solid. Launch still stayed up. That's what I like to see, and I think that's the beauty of these 243s over something like a JPX 923 Tour, where it's a one piece. If you thin that, it's going to be kind of more blade-like in terms of numbers. This one, a lot closer closer to when I actually hit one out of the center, which is, I mean, I think that that's a positive. We'll try to cut one. 
Yeah, it's just, it's it's trying to cut. It's just fighting the wind out of the right. Yeah, on the GC quad, it says it cut. 122 ball, 171 carry. A little bit low spin, but I mean, we could change that by just bending these a little weak, which is probably what I would do if I were to put these in my bag. Oh, bigger draw here. Nice big draw. I mean, yeah, there's wind out of the right helping, but it's still a nice big draw. 181 carry, 5,900 spin, 128 ball. Let's go ahead and try to flight one now. It's a little lower than I'd like it to be. Just a little bit, 169 carry, 6,300 spin, 122 ball. The launch, 12.5, it's just a touch low. I think at 32 degrees with this seven iron, it's very solid in terms of launch and spin. It's not like crazy low, but I think for me, I would probably bend these a little weak, maybe one or two degrees to get that spin in a better window. But in terms of what I can do with the golf ball, in terms of how these feel, the turf interaction, shockingly good. I'm actually really surprised because I thought the 241s would be better. Right out of the box, I just assumed they'd be better because I really have enjoyed playing blades but I gotta be honest these 243s are really impressive to me and they look the part too that's the big thing is they don't look chunky they really don't they look absolutely phenomenal but the performance is the biggest thing that I'm really seeing that has impressed me I can do the same thing in terms of moving the golf ball like I can with blades flighting the golf ball but they just seem more forgiving best way I could describe it all right five iron now again it's a really good shape it looks inviting but at the same time I feel feel like I'm gonna have a lot of control over this. At some point, I think with irons, that's really all you want. Ah, nice and high, tight draw. Mm, 200 carry, 5,000 spin, 135 ball, very solid start. Yeah, and that's a low strike, and it's just doing so freaking well. That micro slot really does make a difference. That went further than the first one that I thought was hit better. 202, 4,800, more ball speed on what I felt like was a slightly thin strike. All right, that was super thin. Oh my goodness, bro. Dropped one mile an hour ball speed, four yards of carry, spin stayed in the same spot on a super thin strike. Very, very impressive to me. Let's move up into the 245s before we jump into any conclusions here. But man, that is, that is really impressive to me. All right, so getting into the 245s now, taking a look at this pitching wedge. The shaping is phenomenal, man. I mean, this does not look like a player's distance iron to me. It just does not look big. It does not look thick. It does not look hollow body in any way, shape, or form. Now, these these are going to be four degrees stronger than the 241s and then two degrees stronger than the 243s. So should go a little bit further. Definitely going to be a little bit lower spinning. It's a player resistance iron. That's kind of what you would expect. But from a looks perspective right off the bat, really, really good looking club. And that is a good start. 139 carry, 9,000 spin. Okay, now that one was caught higher in the face. I will be interested to see where the spin goes. Bigger draw, 9,400. Okay, that's actually a really good thing because that was kind of a pull draw. I would have expected that to drop to like 8,500 and it actually went up. So we'll go ahead and try to flight one here. Yeah, the turf interaction is so much better this year than it was with the 220 series, in my opinion. 139 carry, 9,000 spin, really, really good. And you know the biggest thing about this is it doesn't feel hollow. I know the Pitching Wedge 9-iron and Gap Wedge are partially hollow. They're not fully hollow. But honestly, if I didn't know, I would never guess that this is a hollow body golf club at all. Feels like a fully forged one piece golf club. All right, moving up into the seven iron now, as I take a look at this, now it's starting to give more players distance in terms of looks. You can definitely tell this has a thicker top line. You know, a lot of people have talked about, you can't tell the 241s from the 245s, eh, maybe in the pitching wedge, but as you get down to the seven iron, if you handed me this, I would, I would guess it was probably a player's distance golf club. It's just thicker, not in a bad way. It still looks very good. The shaping great, blade length is awesome, but it's just thicker. Nice thin strike right there. Really love to thin it today, but that still felt really good. 184 carry, 129 ball, 5,900 spin. I mean, this is the loft of my six iron. So I'm expecting this to go for me six iron numbers in terms of carry, in terms of spin, in terms of ball speed. And right off the bat, that's exactly what I'm seeing. But nice to know on a thin strike, those numbers are still staying in a very, very good spot. Again, thinned it a little, but same numbers, 5,900, 184, 129. I love to see that. And that's the biggest advantage you're going to get from playing a player's distance iron. It just allows you the freedom of not having your best stuff, but still getting solid numbers. I'd really like to see what happens if I flush one. That would be ideal. Let's see if I can step up and do it. Got to lock in. Okay, that was flushed. Seemed like it went a little bit higher. Yeah, launch was up about a degree. 186 carry, 6,100, 131 ball. 
really good. I really love when I'm hitting one solid, the spin jumps a little bit. It's not going lower. Sometimes the big thing with player assistance clubs is you flush one, the ball catches a little bit higher on the face, all of a sudden it comes out with less spin, goes way too far. I think that's the biggest advantage of adding a little bit of bounce to these irons. When you do flush one, it's still low enough on the face to where you're not catching jumpers. Exactly what I'm seeing. That went two yards further. Two more miles an hour ball speed and the spin went up. The launch went up a little bit. Very, very solid from a numbers perspective. We'll try to work a couple. Yeah, that's a fade right there. 126 ball, 176 carry, 6600, 17 launch. All right, bigger draw here. This will be interesting to see if the spin really drops. Yeah, that's a nice big draw. 5700, 130, 186. It just didn't drop that drastically. <laughs> These are, honestly, just looking at the initial numbers, pretty shockingly consistent. I can actually really see why Luke Donald is playing these. I was shocked when he went through his what's in the bag on Instagram and he was playing a full set of these, but the numbers don't lie. They're honestly pretty consistent. Let's go ahead and move up into the five iron now and see what we got. But man, this lineup is really impressing me. I mean, I've always been a big fan of Mizuno. You know, I wanted to like the 220 series. It just wasn't quite there for me. These are, these are damn good. All right, 245 five iron, looking down at this. Again, I mean, to me, it does look player's distancey, but at the same time, it's not bad. I mean, I could mistake this for a 243. Definitely wouldn't mistake it for a 241, but I, I could mistake it for a 243. Oh man, I mean, I just missed that. Still went nice and high, tight draw. 201, 5,000, 136 ball. 197, 5600, 137 ball. A little bit shorter carry there. 10-9 launch. The only thing is, this is just a little bit, it's a little bit low lofted. 24 degree 5 iron. So that launch, because it was relatively low, I just don't think it got all the carry out of it that it could have if it was maybe a 26 degree or 25 degree. That's a little higher. Should be better. Yep, yeah, 208, 4400, 137 ball. A little bit of drop and spin there, but I mean, they just don't feel player's distancey to me, which is awesome. I think that's one of the biggest downfalls of a player's distance iron is when they just feel super hot. This feels good, but it doesn't feel crazy hot. It just feels like a nice, solid, soft feeling. I think you sort of can tell it's hollow bodied, but it's not super hot like certain hollow bodied golf clubs are. And for me personally, I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, it's just coming out a little low. It's a little low for me. A 24 degree five iron is just, it's low. 204 carry, 4400, 136 ball, 117 launch. Very solid flight, very nice curvature. They feel great. Turf interaction's awesome. But for me personally, I think with this five iron specifically, it's just got a little bit too low loft for me. Doesn't quite give me the height that I'm looking for. But as a whole, 245s, super solid. Alrighty guys, so there it is. That's our testing of the Mizuno Pro 240 series. Let's kind of go ahead and go through my conclusion starting with the 241 very very solid blade offering there's not a ton of changes you can make in a blade like I mentioned earlier but I think the best thing they did to these was adding a little bit of bounce it just makes them a lot more playable than the 220s which to me were kind of like knives they just really wanted to get into the ground and dig very very easily and quickly and I didn't love that these are super good in terms of turf interaction it's a blade it's not much different but for the changes they made I think they are very good changes all right now getting up into the 223 once again, first thing I want to cover, turf interaction. These are phenomenal from a turf interaction perspective. And that little bit of a wraparound sole with the trail edge grind is really, really good. I think it helps get the sole in and out of the turf very, very nicely. It's not quite blade-like in terms of turf interaction, but for a little bit of a thicker looking cavity back, just in terms of the sole itself, it really moves to the ground very well. In terms of looks, honestly, they look great. I think the biggest thing is they give you a lot of confidence in terms of looks. They look a little little bit bigger but at the same time they don't really look big they do look like something that's going to offer you a ton of control so looks nailed turf interaction nailed the biggest thing that i really notice in these 243s is this little micro slot in the back i hit plenty of shots thin with the seven iron and five irons and ball speed barely dropped spin barely dropped carry barely dropped i think that's probably the 
biggest thing in these 243s that makes them special over something like a JPX 923 Tour. They're just simply more forgiving. You can miss them and they still give you really good numbers. I think in terms of this whole lineup, these are the ones that I am genuinely considering for my bag. I might have to bend them maybe a degree weak to give me the spin that I'm looking for, but that would just take away a little bit of offset and make these even sicker. So 243s, absolutely phenomenal. All right, getting up into the 245s now. A super solid player's distance offering is the best way I could put it. It's not really an iron that I would probably use. I'm not somebody who really needs distance or needs a little bit lower spin. And so because of that, it's not something that would probably fit in my bag. But that being said, feels really good. I think I mentioned earlier, you can kind of tell that it is a hollow body design in terms of the field department, but it doesn't feel super hot. It doesn't feel like you're just going to hit nukes with these irons. And I think that that is a huge positive in terms of turf interaction. Really good. This is the type of iron that it's going to allow you to really miss it kind of all over the face and get away with it. And I think that that is exactly what I saw. Very solid. Not one that I would probably play, but for the right player, for somebody who's maybe considering P790, P770, I think that these are absolutely a must try because they are just super solid. There's really no other way around it. I think throughout this entire lineup, the biggest thing that Mizuno has done that has improved these over the 220s is just adding bounce. I've mentioned turf interaction a bunch. I think I mentioned it when I've talked about all three of these irons, but these are just so much better, in my opinion, from a turf interaction perspective over the 220 line. It's a small thing. It's going to be something that I think a lot of people overlook, but it was a really, really smart move by Mizuno and takes what was an already good lineup in that of the 220s and just makes them better in that of this 240 lineup. As a whole, guys, that's a review. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a like. Comment if you have any questions at all. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you click that notification bell so you're notified anytime that we post a new video. Additionally, make sure you're following us on our other social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Always great content on those channels as well. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace.